Okay, how's everybody doing this evening? Of course, my name is Kent. My channel is EOS San Diego, and I make videos about the EOS blockchain. And we will be in San Francisco this weekend, so please, if you see us there, come up and say hi. We'd like to talk to as many people as possible. And we're really looking forward to this weekend. Um, I also want to say thank you to my good friend Kyle for higher vibes because of the airdrop that we got this afternoon or this evening. Last time I checked the account, I saw some extra tokens in our wallet. So we appreciate the airdrop, Kyle. Thank you very much. Good luck to you. As always, airdrops are very much appreciated. So congratulations to Higher Vibes, and I wish them a lot of success. Um, I want to talk a little bit tonight about the block producers in EOS. Of course, EOS does not have miners. EOS has a trusted layer that are referred to as block producers. Uh, before I talk a little bit about block producers, I will tell you that we are block producers. We are EOS San Diego number one. And a lot of people have voted for us for a block producer. We've been block producers for a couple of weeks now. I appreciate all the votes and all the support. Please vote EOS San Diego number one as a block producer. I'll put it in the comment. Um, people ask me how to vote. There's a lot of easy ways to vote. Most all the wallets, uh, the Gray Mass, uh, the Simplos, Simplos wallet, the Linux wallet, big one, all these wallets. It's very easy. There's just a place usually if you just search around on it, a place to, to vote. It's very easy to vote. So please vote. We would appreciate it. And it also strengthens the blockchain if you vote for block producer. Um, people think block producers have a lot of power, but the power is all generated by the individual token holders. That's what makes the blockchain uh, work. So please vote. And if you would, please vote EOS San Diego. I very much appreciate it. EOS San Diego number one. But ever since EOS become a public blockchain, uh, the block producers have been um, they've been focused on as far as um, getting a bad reputation, getting a bad rap. Um, and this recently, this block, uh, white block paper or study that was released tends to focus on the block producers and says because of the trusted layer that it's not a true blockchain, that it's a cloud server uh, situation. And the reason they're saying that mainly is because they, they, they think that the block producers are up to mischief. Uh, up to nefarious activities, able to vote for each other, able to set up proxies and just recycle votes, regenerate votes and continue to vote for one another. Which is what I want to address tonight because I, 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 I want to talk to, to you about why this is, why block producers are a good idea and actually a much better idea than miners and actually promote blockchain technology much better than uh, the miners in Bitcoin or, or, uh, um, or Ethereum. Uh, and the reason why is because the block producers are actually investing back in the blockchain. Block producers earn rewards. The, the, I think the top 80 block producers receive a reward. Uh, and then there's a, like a, over 400 running nodes. So a lot of validators beyond that. So there's a lot of you know, money reinvested back into block producers or back into the blockchain through the block producers. And as block producers, we are looking at all the different um, tools and all the different infrastructures being built by block producers. And it's very, it's, it's, it's getting to be quite a lot. I mean, when we look at what we need to do in order to work ourselves up a list, uh, what we need to build, what we need to invest back into the community, you can see why the block producer idea is such a good idea because it furthers the advancement of blockchain. It furthers the idea of building something and getting rewards for building something and investing back in the community. As in Ethereum and Bitcoin, when people earn a reward or earn Bitcoin or Ethereum for mining, they don't have to put it back into the community. They don't have to reinvest in order to do that. You can run a, you can do a mining on, on your laptop computer in Ethereum or Bitcoin. You don't because you're not going to be able to compete for that. You could do it a long time ago, but you're not today. But if you earn rewards, you're not going to put it back into the uh, into the Ethereum or Bitcoin infrastructure, basically your reward is gonna be put back into making more rewards, or you're gonna be able to take the rewards and use them for whatever else, but you're not gonna put them back into the community generally. In, a, in, in EOS, you have to put it back in the community to become, to stay block producer, because if you don't, people aren't gonna use your tools. They're not going to know who you are because you haven't made a wallet or you haven't done something. Like somebody said to me recently in one of my comments, I said, uh, why don't you do something for the community instead of making wildish, outlandish predictions? I thought that was pretty funny because um, 
um, I understand what he was saying. He said, hey man, do something for the community. If you wanna be a block producer, if you wanna be one of the top 21, invest in something, build something, do something. And that's what we've been thinking. That's what we've been doing. And that's why I'm recognizing so much good work that's been done by the block producers, not only in maintaining the EOS blockchain, but in order to maintain or build out the infrastructure as far as blockchain altogether. The only way blockchain is gonna become mass adopted is if there's a lot of infrastructure built and a lot of work being done. The only way work gets done and infrastructure gets built is if there's a way for people to finance it. A good way to finance it is if it's reinvested back into the chain by having rewards by people that are actually building and making the chain. That's why I think block producers are such a good idea, a much superior idea over miners. Uh, now, the paper, the white block paper would say that in the cryptography, can't say that word, cryptography, is different through EOS, but it's really not. The only difference between Ethereum and, and Bitcoin and the cryptography of EOS is that there's a trusted layer, which is the block producers, which is when every time you produce a block, there's got to be some sort of, there's got to be something there that gives the, 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 the ability, the next transaction that to be built has to be done by somebody that's trusted. Through that trust is the ability to make a, a block quicker, to lay the information down faster, and to have some sort of uh, um, scalability to the blockchain. Blockchain will never get mass adopted without being scalable. It will never get mass adoption without the ability for there to be somebody that can actually recognize a transaction and maybe re not reverse the transaction, but be able to do something if the transaction isn't a valid transaction. People do not are not going to lose money on the blockchain. Um, if you can't have some, some way of, of being able to validate and trust the people building the blockchain. Um, that's the, going to be the problem with mass ado adoption. If some transactions can't be stopped or maybe even analyzed or maybe reversed uh, because of some something somebody's done, some phishing scam or something like that, um, it's not going to get mass adoption. It, it, you know, it's the why the FDIC ever came into existence in the United States because people lost money in the banks. If you lose money in a bank, you're going to be very, they're very rare and skeptical of using a bank again. If you lose money in the blockchain, you're not going to want to put money in the blockchain. And if you don't have that trusted layer and something, somebody can scam your money or take your money and you can't get that money back, like with EOS, what, what we're doing with as far as the arbitration is concerned, you can't get that money back. This is not going to get mass adoption. And that's why EOS block producers are so important. That's why you need the trusted layer. And that's why I think that the block producers are a superior form of building a blockchain over the miners and um, Ethereum and Bitcoin. Ethereum and Bitcoin will never get mass adoption. They will be recognized as decentralized because anybody can uh, do a node or you know do, do, uh, run a node on any computer anywhere in the world. Well, you can do the same thing with EOS. Uh, it's just that if you want to get to the top 21, you've got to get the community to support you. But it's basically technically the same thing. There's just a trusted layer there. But block producers have gotten, I think, a bad reputation by people like um, like the white block paper or the white block idea, when essentially this is the only way you're ever going to build mass adoption, the only way you're going to build value back in the, in the, in the blockchain, and the only way anybody's ever going to want to become a block producer or use a, be a block producer is if there's a way to get a reward and then be able to build tools for the community. These tools aren't going to get built any other way. Um, you see how long it's taken Bitcoin to do anything. You see how long it's taken Ethereum to do anything. With EOS, with the reinvestment back into the tools, making it easier, and it will be very much easier. I see a lot of extremely helpful tools being built right now that will make the use of blockchain very, very easy, user-friendly. Like somebody left a comment one time on one of my channel, one of my videos, something about when will Bitcoin or when will uh, EOS be so easy to use that I don't have to worry about wallets and private keys and public keys. And that's true. And the only way this is going to happen is if the, the community, the block producers that are getting rewards for building the chain, reinvest back in the chain and make tools, make, 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 make things, build things to make it easier and more um, uh, uh, streamlined to use. And that's why I think EOS has the superior system. A true blockchain that reinvests and has the ability for people not to lose money on it, has an ability for some arbitration. There has to have that. be a has to be a trust factor there and it has to be a, 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 an ability 
uh, to keep people's money safe and to keep accounts safe and to be able to still have all um, the valuable uh, the, the, the valuable uh, uh, traits of a blockchain, the immutability, uh, the transparency, the open ledger, all those things are true, but yet with the ability to reinvest and the ability to earn rewards and build tools and the ability to get mass adoption and to have a lot of uh, infrastructure built out through the progression of the blockchain. As the blockchain gets built, rewards get earned, more and more people invest back into the blockchain, and this is how blockchain is going to become mainstream. When people invest in it, block producers invest in it, uh, people that have uh, skills, abilities to build things on the blockchain, abilities to code things in uh, uh, the blockchain world, when they are able to earn rewards and build, put back into it, that's when it's going to become massively used, mass used by everybody. Block producers are the only way to build a blockchain. Block producers are a blockchain, and block producers are superior to miners. Um, it's the superior way of doing things. And I think that uh, time will tell how this gets built and how well it gets used and how well it becomes mass adopted. And it will be doing this by people investing. And block producers are, are a main part of that. So anyway, I've rambled on for a while. I hope I made sense. I appreciate you watching. Thank you very much.